going to go ahead and get started. Um, first, a, a small correction. I'm actually uh, not Nolan Wright, uh, founder and CTO of Accelerator. My name is Matt Schmulen, um, a lead SE. I've uh, been with the company now for a little over two years. Um, so you may have a second stringer today, but I promise I'll make up for it in, uh, in initiative and uh, walk you through, through the entire product, our Accelerator Titanium platform, our integrations with Amazon, as well as our new module that's just been released here uh, over this past week. So one-click mobile cloud uh, services using AWS. So uh, if that's what you're here for, you're in the right place. We'll go ahead and get started. So a little bit about Accelerator. Uh, Silicon Valley startup out of Mountain View, California, uh, VC backed and based. We've been around for a little while, since 2007. The original Titanium product was actually a competitive product to um, Adobe Air. It was actually targeted towards desktops. Uh, there was, of course, a pivot um, about a year and a half later afterwards that specifically targeted the iOS platform. Turned out that the implementation strategy allowing you to write a native application using JavaScript Compiling down to iOS, giving you full access to the native look and feel, was very valuable to iOS Objective-C, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, iPhone developers looking to build iPhone applications without having to leverage Objective-C. Then about a year and a half later, we added the Android platform, and all of a sudden we had a cross-platform solution that allowed you to create a native application, full access to the native SDKs, leveraging JavaScript. And of course, that's come to us to where we are today. So we support iOS, Android. We have a mobile web or a mobile HTML target, we recently announced support for Windows 8 platform. You can look for that here in uh, Q1 of next year. And of course, we also have announced support for BlackBerry 10. So we're covering all four of the major products as well as mobile web, and of course, from a unified JavaScript uh, code base. We've also additionally integrated a mobile cloud platform. Uh, we uh, acquired CocoFish um, in January of this past year and integrated it directly into the Titanium mobile platform. So not only are you able to, able to build your native mobile client, but you can also integrate with an app, a mobile cloud backend substrate. So we've had some success over the past year, two years. We've got a very growing um, and active user community. Over 400,000 registered developers on top of the Titanium platform. And they've shipped over 40, uh, actually the new number now is 50,000 native mobile iPhone and Android applications, predominantly native iPhone and Android apps. Uh, to the various markets, both consumer-facing iTunes and Android, as well as both enterprise uh, app stores. These are applications that are shipped internally to employees. Um, some of the bigger ones that you may know about is the NBC app. The NBC flagship application, if you download it on your iPad, is built on top of Titanium. Um, and additionally, we support uh, Zipcar is on our platform. GameStop app on iOS and Android is also built on top of Titanium. In addition to um, the native applications that are built on top of it, we also provide an ecosystem that allow you to integrate native SDK controls components as well as APIs, and that's the module marketplace. And I'll go over that in a little bit. And that's where we have our integration that was launched earlier this week with Amazon, the AWS Web Services, that allow you to directly integrate with uh, S3, SimpleDB, uh, DynamoDB, SQS, SNS, straight from the mobile client itself. Before we get into it, though, um, let's go over a little bit about the cross-platform nature of what we do. So you create your native JavaScript application, and we'll go through this here, actually. I'll do a live demo. We'll build a small application and walk you straight through the platform and how it integrates. You can integrate with a variety of technologies. We have an open marketplace, as I said earlier, that allows you to pull in content. You may be integrating with Salesforce, of course, uh, AWS, um, the Amazon services. You may be, able to, um, you may be integrating with a, a rich charting controller component that's done by a member of our community and offered up on our marketplace. So you have support cross-platform devices, both iOS and Android. You have, if you want, full code reusability. We generally don't recommend this. Generally speaking, we like it when people do uh, take advantage of the platform differentiations. So what we mean by that is, for instance, if you're developing an iPad application and you want to leverage the um, split view controlling component that's specifically native and available on the iPad, we'd like you to do branch conditionals into the in the core uh, source code so that you can then add that special uniqueness that provides that unique experience. And of course, same thing on Android. You can, of course, leverage activities and intents and, of course, get access to those hard menu buttons that are available on Android but not available on iOS. So generally speaking, 65, 75% code reuse across most of the applications. And then that like, puts the control in the developer's hand to fragment where they want to take advantage of feature-specific uh, features and functionality, or keep it unified, uh, pending the economics of your mobile application delivery. 
So a little bit about the architecture. So we're unique in the space in that even though you're writing a native application using a non-native language, JavaScript, we're giving you full access to the SDK. And we do that by taking your JavaScript application level code, running it through our JavaScript runtime, and creating the native controls and components under the hood for you. So this means that you get access to all the visual components, the table views tabs, sliders, that unique picker control and component, of course, that's available on iOS that have, has Steve Jobs' fingerprints all over it. Um, you also have access to non-visual components, such as uh, SQLite uh, databases, local storage, access to the accelerometer. Um, this means that you can gain access to the full SDK, giving you parity to what a native Objective-C developer did, can do, or a native Java or Android can do, but of course you have the additional advantage of keeping a unified code base. That unified code base means that you can then target, of course, multiple platforms. That means that you'll do an iteration, develop your Titanium mobile application, run it in the IDE, which will, of course, invoke the native simulators and emulators provided by the platform manufacturers. So you're actually running, debugging, against the native application code on the native device itself. Then you can click target across the board. So you can click target for an Android application to run in the emulator. Or you can say, I want to run it in a mobile web frame. So this means that you're going to take that same Titanium JavaScript application level code, and you're going to want it in a web browser that's mobile optimized. Uh, we are a mobile optimized web solution. We're not targeting uh, the big web desktop as it were. And of course, when you do this, you get the economics of not having to rewrite the core code base. And also, you don't have to shift languages. So for instance, when you're writing that native application in iPhone, historically Objective-C, or Android for the Java, you can keep in a code uh, language JavaScript, which of course is very familiar and accessible for a large number of mobile web developers. So the best way to really show the product is to do a little walkthrough and create a little native application. And so I'll go ahead and fire up the uh, Titanium Studio, which is our development environment. We'll target a native iPhone Android application, and we'll build a quick prototype here just to show you the full workflow. All right, let's switch this over. Excellent. So this is Titanium Studio. Um, it's actually derived from the uh, Aptana IDE, which was an acquisition about a year and a half, two years ago. So you have full access to what you'd expect from a development environment. That means access to GitHub, it has code completion, you can debug in the simulators and emulators provided by the platform manufacturer, and of course build your project from start to finish in Titanium, and of course deploy it all the way through. So we'll go ahead and start. We'll create a new Titanium mobile application here. And I'm just going to use the default template. So. We'll create our conf app, com.accelerator. We'll just call it AWS conf. Let's. I'm using reverse URI encoding for the app ID, just as you would in a native development environment. Um, I'm targeting across the board here, our full platform. And then if you look down here, actually it's getting clipped just a little bit. I also leaving on our cloud services. This is Accelerator Cloud Services that allows you to an endpoint to connect to if you want to have a connected application and leverage our uh, mobile platform as a service. Um, I can turn this off, of course, and then manage all the requests myself, either by doing an HTTP RESTful request, or I could inter integrate a module like the AWS module. We'll go ahead and finish that. So it's going to create the native project for us. It's going to stub out a little app.js file. There we are. And here's my modules here on the left and right. And so you can see I have a TI Cloud module already uh, integrated since I left it on. And since it is the Amazon Web Conference here, we want to make sure and go ahead and add the AWS module that was just released from our marketplace um, earlier this week. And of course, this gives us access to all the AWS components and controls, such as uh, SQLite, um, oops, sorry, um, DynamoDB, uh, simple, uh, simple, <laughs> simple Table, um, S3, SQS, and SNS. So here we go, there it is. So I would have actually pulled this from our marketplace ahead of time. So this is our accelerator.com. And if you go to marketplace.accelerator.com, you'll see a variety of web controls, whoops, of modules available. Let's see if we can't blow that up. We have over 320 different modules in the marketplace today that allows you to even more rapidly develop your application. You can leverage a brick and mortar style integration where you may pull a rich charge library, a back end database content, of course, uh, leverage uh, maybe DynamoDB for storing content. You download the module here to your, local, to your local host machine, and then it drops right into the global assembly. We'll go ahead and add that. And so now I have the Amazon AWS into my manifest. And now let's go ahead and build it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and build it and run it in the iPhone simulator. We'll let it build out here. It takes a little bit on the first build, but of course subsequent builds are much quicker since we don't have to rebuild the entire project itself. Now, of course, I can run it in the iPhone simulator, the Android emulator. I can run it in the iPad simulator as well, which is just, of course, a different flavor of the iOS platform. If I had a device connected to my host machine, I could push it as an ad hoc uh, distribution to my iOS device, or I can just push it out as an app pay file to my hosted uh, Android device that's connected to my sheen, machine. Additionally, I can distribute it to the iTunes store or the Android market. I can also bundle distribute it for an enterprise app distribution. So I can continue on the tool chain if I'm making an application for my Im internal employees. Here's our iPhone simulator coming up. And there we go. Uh, of course, this is the simulator provided by um, Apple. Um, and of course, it's a very simple application. There's not much to this one. So let's go ahead and we'll extend it out here and add some more features and functionality to it. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, we started with the tab group. And uh, a very easy way to, to kind of get a feel and understand a little more about uh, Titanium is everywhere you see a ti.ui, for instance, create tab group or create window, you know we're creating a native window or a native label or a native tab group under the hood. This is what gives you parity across both platforms. So of course, uh, the tab group um, has parity across both Android and iOS. So I can keep a unified code base. Um, let's go ahead and remove all this content here. And let's go ahead and build out. We'll build out uh, our simple splash screen for the first tab. Um, we'll build a simple table as well. And we'll stop there for now. So I'm going to just wrap this uh, splash screen into a tab and a window. So I'm going to create my native window, my native tab, add that tab to the tab group. And then, of course, here at the bottom with my open, I'm going to present that to the user. We'll do the same thing with our tab group. And of course, we'll run it in the simulator. Of course, not much is going to change. It's still two tabs. Let's go ahead and do a little refresh here. And of course, since my splash screen um, is empty, my file, then my application is not going to have anything when I open it up. So I'm going to go ahead and drop in. Oops. There you go. Simulator jumped up on me. There's our splash and our table tab. Let's go ahead and drop in our, sp our simple splash screen. So here's our simple splash screen. Um, we'll go through some of the commented code here in a minute, but this is a great way just to kind of take a quick look. So here I am with my image view. It's going to create a native image view. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and pull my resource off the web. Uh, of course, I could have loaded it from local storage. You have full access to the file storage, so uh, uh, read, write access, uh, inject content into SQLite storage, put flat files, request them later, even share them across multiple applications. Now we'll come over here, and on our simple table here, let's go ahead and drop in just a simple table. And this is just going to create a couple of table data rows. It'll create a native table view. And then I'm just going to put a simple listener here to show and open a window. In this case, I'm going to use an iPhone-specific transition, the curl up, which of course is native, available to native uh, iOS developers, Objective-C. And we'll go ahead and run that in the simulator. And so here we're creating a native application. It's going to be a native IPA and a native app, key, app K file. Full access to the native SDK, full access to all the controls and components. Uh, we'll be able to do table views, table rows, create composite table view rows with images on the left and, to, and headers on the right, uh, create specific dra drill downs. We can also do our own custom views as well. So there's our simple uh, splash screen that pulls the content off the web. And here's our simple table view row with the PLOA. All right, so very simple. Of course, you have full access to a much richer control and component as you build out your application. You can also, of course, target the iPad for uh, the large form factor. And then we also support for Android if you want to support the specific uh, density of image content within the application. This means that, for instance, if you have low density images and high density images, you can place those in the correct folders in Titanium so you can get really the best look and feel for the application. Application success, we found, is really about making sure that you're taking advantage of the features that differentiate the core product. And that allows, of course, for you to stand out in your application. It allows for responsiveness. It allows for iPhone apps to look like iPhone apps, Android apps to look like Android apps. You're delivering on the expectation of an application to those downloaded from a consumer store. And of course, maintaining the economics of that delivery structure by 
by preserving a unified code base is an additional advantage and quickly allows you to iterate through that application. All right, so let's go back. We'll come back to this demo here in just a minute, and we'll go ahead and integrate some ACS or Accelerator Cloud Services, which sits on top of the AWS infrastructure. And then we'll go ahead and also pull in specifically the AWS modules. And the differentiation between those two is, one, it's gonna be able to go through our actual Accelerator Cloud Services, so it's just one or two lines of code that's gonna be able to go out and you're gonna be able to do, uh, take advantage of one of our 20 or 25 API-specific uh, features and functionalities that are already outlined for developers. And of course, the other one where you're actually integrating the module means that the mobile client itself is reaching out directly to the AWS uh, infrastructure during requesting its DynamoDB or whatever service you're after. Uh, we find that mobile applications have a variety and high variability in the endpoints they're integrating. In some cases, you may be taking uh, data and content from an SAP database. You may be doing a request from Twitter. You may be pulling in additional content um, from a simple table. Then mashing it up on a mobile client. Some of this can have a performance impact in that when you're creating multiple requests out for multiple endpoints and then pulling them into the mobile client individually, you can cause a little bit of user deprecation. But the important thing is that it's in your hands. And that means that you can make the decisions and if you're going out directly to the end source, or you may be leveraging some of our um, custom Node.js services that aggregate them in ACS, or you may just be targeting one, uh, one end vendor, such as DynamoDB. All right, let's click back over here. There we go. So that was the Titanium Core SDK. That's what allows you to make a native mobile application from a unified code base. In addition to the Titanium Core SDK, of course, we have our Accelerator Cloud Services. Accelerator Cloud Services has the same directive that Titanium does. That is to allow developers to quickly create native mobile applications without having to deal with the substrate of technology under the hood, making sure you still have access, but you don't necessarily have to carry that economic burden. And the second place where we find that uh, very common is, of course, in accessing cloud services and content. When you're creating a mobile application, it's not gonna stand on its own. No mobile application is an island. You're always pulling content and uh, services from other places. And when you do that on your own, of course, you have to go spin up your own instance, add your own hardware. It may be an EC2 instance. You have to manage the scaling of that and the throttling of that. You oftentimes are working in a different language. It may be a, maybe a Ruby, it may be Python, it may be Node.js even. And then as a developer, even though you're just trying to create and build a native mobile application, you're also having to be pulled into the substrate of the back end and deal with the infrastructure pieces that, that are secondary to your mobile application uh, initiative. And so the Accelerator Cloud Services allows us to remove the necessity, necessity for you dealing with that lower substrate. You can sit on top of the Accelerator Cloud Services, call um, one of our predefined 20, 25 endpoints for common usage such as user authentication. Um, maybe you wanna do uh, dynamic storage with a uh, user or a uh, name, val par name val value pair lookup. Maybe you wanna do something, for instance, with locations in which you also have to manage a specific request that then takes into account uh, the geolocation and geolocation range for a pin or some uh, geo, or geo data. Titanium Accelerator Cloud Services allows you to focus on the mobile application, have a substrate that's already there and available for you, and then further integrate and customize either from our modules that hook in, for instance, integration like with an SAP backend, or your own custom Node.js server content, and then quickly apply that to your mobile application without having to go and do the endpoints and manage the infrastructure. So this is a very simple one. Um, all you have to do is do the, the checkbox and when you first create your Titanium mobile application to leave the cloud enabled. And then just a couple lines of code. We have a, a require architecture under the hood. So if you're familiar with JavaScript, you'll be very comfortable with it. You're just gonna require in the uh, TI cloud module. Actually, it's already uh, included in the bundling if you leave the checkbox on. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and create a user. So user, go ahead and set our parameters. Cloud objects create, we'll initialize, initialize the user. And then we're gonna query for the user set that's out there on the cloud. So that's three lines of code. You've got a full backend for user management, as well as rights and management on the, uh, on the user side. Do the request, it handles everything else. As your application goes along, of course, 
when you first initially start your application, maybe it's a consumer application, the volume and load of that application is not really much of a problem. You may only have maybe a couple hundred or a couple thousand users. Of course, if you happen to be lucky enough to hit the asymptotic hockey stick of success in mobile applications, all of a sudden that backend substrate becomes very important and scaling that becomes even more critical. And of course, Accelerator Cloud Services helps with that. That way you don't have to manage spinning up additional nodes, manage the additional volume that's coming across the line. You can simply focus on writing your mobile application across multiple platforms. I'll go ahead and I'll walk through this in the code in just a little bit. We have uh, about 20 of these pre-built services. So users, geolocations, we even have mobile optimized image content. So if you're caching images or photos out onto the, uh, on our ACS, you can go ahead and pull that across without having to deal with that nuance of managing uh, mobile optimized uh, image content requests. Um, of course, one of the most popular ones is our push notification services. So of course, if you want uh, one of the most highly valuable uh, features of a mobile application, of course, is being able to gain content contact to your users when their mobile application is not turned on. So they've installed it, maybe they have the GameStop application, they don't have it open, and all of a sudden there's a coupon code uh, relevant to their specific uh, needs. Push notification server goes out, provides notification to the user, shows them the top bar on the iOS and Android, click the notification, open the application in some specific context. And of course, that's available in cloud services with just a couple lines of titanium code. No need to stand up your own MQTT server or do your own uh, platform specific push notification. Uh, it's one of the most popular features. Um, and of course, being able to do that without having to deal with that substrate goes back to that core initiative of letting you focus on the specific business initiatives and the specific value of your mobile application. So in, a difference, in addition to this, we've also announced and we are in beta right now for our custom services using Node. So you're already writing your application in JavaScript for the mobile client. You're getting your native iPhone and Android application on top of it. You may be leveraging one or two or three of our predefined Accelerator Cloud service endpoints. Maybe you're using users and images and uh, locations. But you want to do something more. And you realize, of course, that you can pull additional components into your native client and do one, two, three requests out to Twitter, another request out to SAP, another request out to your um, AWS endpoint mash that up on the mobile client. But remember, again, you're doing a request. You may be returning uh, 20 different value pairs out of that. You may only be using two or three out of each one. That additional request content on the mobile client deprecates from that user experience. Of course, mobile application development is about uh, dealing with limited resources. It's not a desktop. You have limited memory. You've got limited uh, screen real estate space in the mobile application. And of course, you have limited bandwidth. You're coming in and out of connectivity. You're bouncing in and out of a 3G connectivity. So anytime you can save the actual or throttle the content really to make sure that the bolt really fits the nut on that uh, end user request is a, a, an additional advantage for your customers. And so with the Accelerator Cloud Services custom node integration, this means you can write your own custom endpoint that may do, be doing aggregation requests across two or three endpoints. Keep that on the cloud so that the mobile request response that goes back to the mobile application is very specific to that user request. And once again, that preserves that user experience. Users, when they're sitting there waiting, they're not really sure why they're waiting. They're just gonna have to sit there and wait while you may be munging different content requests across. And of course, the value is that building the native and mobile application in JavaScript, now you're able to manage those backend node services in JavaScript as well. And so you get side-by-side -side execution of your mobile client in the IDE, as well as the server component. So this is the, uh, this is the cake layer for Accelerator Cloud Services. Um, we've got a Accelerator Cloud Services sitting on top of it. Uh, we have a freemium model, so you can come in, step into the co-hosted ACS for free. It's got a very high meter mark on the consumption bandwidth, so you can go ahead and start building your mobile application. Then, as you go farther, if you need your own specific instances, then you can do your own private virtual instances, or of course get an instance specific to your enterprise and organization. It sits on top of the pretty much the standard uh, suspects. Uh, we're running a, um, excuse me, uh, we're running a uh, uh, EC2 instance under the hood, um, as well as a MongoDB uh, infrastructure, so we can allow that, that standard uh, schemaless request response. So let's go ahead and we'll finish out our application and we'll do a quick, uh, quick addendum to our mobile app here to go ahead and add some ACS components. There we go. So we're back at a very simple app. Let's go ahead and uh, build this out a little more. 
So let's go back to our splash screen here, which was, of course, very simple. It really just showed an image view and presented it to the user. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull in, in my splash screen, cloud services. Specifically, I'll create a user label, UI label on the iOS side and an Android label. And I'm also going to create a register button, a login button, a logout button, and then, of course, hook into my cloud services. In this case, logout button is simply going to tell ACS I'm going to log out of this user experience. Login is simply going to log in. I went ahead and pre-configured my, uh, my user name and password. Of course, in the application, you'll present this to the user for the request. If the user's not registered, I will go ahead and register the user as well and make sure that they're registered across the board. Let's go ahead and uncomment this code. And then let's go ahead and let's extend this out a little bit, and we'll do some ACS data as well so we can do a request out to ACS. So I'll go ahead and wrap that. And so now I'm adding my third tab here. There's my ACS data. And I'm going to hook into the ACS places in this case. Go ahead and let it run right quick. Oh, actually, and while I'm letting that run, I might as well spool up my Android emulator. Let that go as well. So there's my iPhone. Oh, let's let our Android emulator come up. Here we are with our register login, logout not connected. We had our table data here. And then we have our ACS data. No content yet. So we'll go ahead and register and create the user here. So I register the user, two lines of JavaScript code to go out and create this user login. Now I'll go ahead and I went ahead and pre-log me in. I can log myself out, logged out, one more line of code in, into the login, log myself back in. This goes straight to our ACS users. No need to manage the user set. It's already done in ACS. We'll come out to the ACS data, and I'm going to go ahead and do a create for a endpoint. In this case, I'm just creating an accelerator headquarter pin out on the locations. Do a refresh out, request all the, the, uh, the locations available to this user, and we'll go ahead and do one or two more here. Let's go ahead and fire up again our Android emulator. Come on, MacBook Air, you can do it. Actually, Fire that off again, let it go back and rebuild the Android component, and then install it on the Android emulator. All right, so while that's doing that, we'll go ahead and step over and go ahead and start walking through the Amazon AWS modules, and then uh, go ahead and integrate uh, um, simple D or uh, DynamoDB integration into the mobile application. So you can go to marketplace.accelerator.com. Um, we've got about 320, 330 different module integrations from different um, components and vendors. Remember, when you build a Titanium mobile application, you're writing it in JavaScript. We have the ability for anybody to extend the core SDK, that's the Titanium SDK, to create what we refer to as modules. And a module actually sits shoulder to shoulder to our native SDK. So for instance, let's say you have um, a legacy uh, Objective-C component control. Maybe it's a rich charting or graphing. Maybe it accesses OpenGL for even more responsive uh, charts and graphs. Or maybe you have a very specific authentication controlling component uh, that puts some information into the key storage, maybe does some very special um, authentication configuration. You can pull those controls and components into Titanium by wrapping it in a module. And you can e either keep that module located specifically on your host machine, so you may be building multiple controls and components for a more app factory approach, or you can actually distribute it on our marketplace. 
In addition to native modules, modules that leverage a native controller component that we don't give you access to or that has some special unique piece, you can also use a common JS module. And common JS module means that you're sitting on top of the Titanium platform. So for instance, uh, let's say you're creating uh, or reusing um, endpoint network requests to go out and pull content off of a service. You're going to collapse that and component into a composite table view row and then create a table view component to it. You can create that in pure JavaScript code, bundle it in the common JS Titanium module, and then of course either distribute, proliferate it out on our marketplace or keep it on your internal host machine. And so of course we've done this for you for Accelerator uh, for the AWS, for the Amazon Web Service Controls component. So we gave you full access to SimpleDB, uh, S3, uh, SES, and SQS for the Q service, and of course uh, DynamoDB, which is a fantastic service. Of course that's a schemaless, um, responsive Dynamo, uh, database content that allows you to push content out, pull it across rapidly, and then display it in its mobile application. The process you go through to do this is go to the marketplace, click the download button, import it into your Titanium Studio. It's going to load it in a local cache, and then you're going to qu quite simply load it up by doing a require uh, inside your mobile application. And so we'll go ahead and walk through that piece right now. So now, at the end of this, of course, we'll have our native mobile and iPhone and Android application. We'll be doing a local storage, local, local request. We'll go out to our ACS for some of our content endpoints. And then, of course, in the case for our Amazon controller component, we'll be going out to Amazon directly to DynamoDB to pull content across. This gives you that flexibility that you need to create a mobile application to, of course, integrate with a wide variety of endpoint content. And of course, keep that native mobile application look and feel. All right. So let's... Come back here. Oh, it looks, looks like I crashed my Android emulator. Let's go ahead and fire that guy up here in the background. We'll let that run. Now, while that's going, let's go ahead and we'll do our AWS tab to go ahead and pull our AWS content. Oh. Oh, there. Thanks. It's not quite as fun as if you can't see it work. Just take my word for it. So here I'm going to go ahead and create a new tab. Uh, we'll call it the AWS tab. Of course, that AWS tab is empty. Oh, there's our Android emulator. It's decided to come up. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and we'll also spin up our iPhone simulator here. And then so we're going to go ahead and drop in our Dynamo integration. And we'll walk a little bit of this code so you can take a look at it. Let's see if I can't uh, blow this up just a little bit. So you're going to go ahead and walk through the components and controls. Require your AWS module. Set your table name. And then, since the module handles the wrapping under the hood, in this case, we're just going to API AWS DDB create table. And it's going to create the DynamoDB table on the back end. We're going to do the same thing to add users or to add content to it, and then do the same thing when we do the scan request to come back out. We'll go ahead and build it. Android emulator doesn't want to come up, does it? There we go. There's our splash table a screen with our re registered. Oops, let's go ahead and log back in since I've already created that user. We've got just our standard static table data. The SES data, which is still out there. We'll go ahead and pull another one in. And now we have, of course, our AWS table that integrates with DynamoDB. I've gone ahead and hooked in that hard build control button here for create table. So I'm going to go ahead and create my table name. We'll go ahead and create that table. We'll go out to Amazon or to the uh, DynamoDB, create the table. Then let's go ahead and insert some users. 
Here we go. Just do our request out to add 10 users, or a couple of them. Insert those across. Now we'll do the request out to list the users. Actually, let's go ahead and open up our DynamoDB. So we can see our content out there. We've got our read throughput coming. Let's rebuild that Android emulator too while we're at it. Close down the table for the DynamoDB. So now you've got your native iOS application, and shortly here our Android application when the emulator comes back up. It's leveraging Accelerator Cloud Services for uh, going out and doing the user um, authentication and login. Of course, I can go out and do a direct request out to an in-service point if I wanted. So for instance, on, on this table, if I wanted to do a more dynamic table request, let's go ahead and take this out and we'll do a quick Twitter request to the table set. And of course, since I'm in JavaScript already, since I'm already in uh, the correct language response, if I go out and pull JSON, JSON content request here, um, as, is, as in the case of the Twitter uh, API request, then I can go ahead and load my payload, my usernames, and my screen straight in. The ACS data, and of course now our AWS content request, which is specifically leveraging the module to go out and pull the content. Of course, there's a couple additional features and functionality that you're given. Uh, number one is you get full analytics on top of the platform. Because you're on top of Titanium, uh, you, we have analytics pre-built and pre-instrumented to the mobile application, so you can measure the usage and success of the application, as well as doing custom call to action. So for instance, uh, in addition to, to measuring kind of the boilerplate analytics content about users, uh, what device they're on, what their session time is, what the geolocation uh, of those users are down to, uh, down to the city level, you can also do custom call to action, for instance, coupons or uh, sharing information or sharing content, for instance, through a Twitter API or something, and then be able to go back through that, measure that against your analytics services, and then see the response as it comes back in. So let's click over here finish off the rest of this, and I'm going to open it up for questions and then uh, kick this Android emulator up and, so we can see the full thing. 